Stable coins are one of the most fundamentally important building blocks of the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. Without stable coins, it would be very impractical to trade on cryptocurrency exchanges and decentralized finance basically wouldn't even function. Stable coins are very important, but why do companies actually issue stable coins? What's in it for them and how do they make a profit? Most importantly, are there any future opportunities for issuers of these stable coins to improve their business models? That's what we're talking about in today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and in today's video we are talking all about stablecoin issuers and how they make that money. Now before we start the video, obviously it's not financial advice. I'm just trying to explain how cryptocurrencies work so you have a better understanding. Really quick, before we get into how they make money, I want to reiterate how critically important stablecoins are. If we look at the top five cryptos by trading volume, stable coins are three of them. Because anytime you trade on a crypto exchange, whether you're buying or selling, you're usually either selling into a stable coin to lock in your profits, or you are buying into the crypto from a stable coin. So stable coins are incredibly important on exchanges. Also with regards to decentralized finance, if I'm making a loan, for 100 coins, I want to know that when that loan gets repaid, my 100 coins are going to be about the same value as when I lent them out. I don't want to make a 100 coin loan that's valued at $1,000, but when I get repaid, I still get my 100 coins, but now they're valued at 10 cents. So having a stable valued asset, in my opinion, is essential to the cryptocurrency ecosystem. But what is the incentive for companies to issue stable coins? There are two key ways that stable coin issuers can make money. Fractional reserve lending, kind of like banking, and then getting interest on their reserves. We'll talk about both of them in the video. The first way that stable coin issuers can make money, and I will be honest, this is not one of the most popular ways it's kind of looked down on in crypto, is through a fractional reserve model. Essentially, you want 100 stable coins. I say, okay, give me $100. I'll create a stable coin for you. I create the stable coin. I issue it. And then with that $100, I know that not everyone that I issue these stable coins to, they're not all going to redeem them on the same day. So I start lending out some of that money. Now, again, this is kind of similar to how fractional reserve banking works. For that reason, it's not really popular in cryptocurrency. Some companies have been accused of operating this way, and then the companies will say, no, we don't really do that. So not getting into that debate here, just highlighting that it is a theoretical possibility. Some stablecoin issuers could make money in that way. One of the more accepted and I would say popular ways is by using a fully backed model, but trading liquidity for interest and earning interest on the reserve assets that back your stablecoin. <laughs> and I know that sounds like um, pretty detailed, but we'll break it down nicely and simple. What we have here is the USDC stablecoin, which is issued by Circle. Now, I'm not saying USDC because I think you should go invest in it right this minute or because it's the best or because it's the worst. It was simply easy to find data. So take that for what it's worth. Um, but essentially what USDC does, Circle, about 75% of the reserve assets are held in treasuries and 25% are held in cash. So what this means is that when they issue a stablecoin, they know, again, not everyone's going to come in to redeem that stablecoin at once. So they keep 25% in cash. So the people that do want to redeem their stablecoins, they can do that without an issue. The rest is held in treasuries. So they're making yield on those treasuries, which are traditionally one of the safest investments. If more people need to redeem, they simply sell those treasuries for cash and then redeem them for the customers. So we can actually see here, and this is really cool, this is why I chose the example of Circle, USDC, because they actually show you what individual treasury securities they own. And you can see here a treasury bill or note or bond is denoted by a specific QCIP. This report is from August, I think. So some of the assets that they have on here have been expired. They've already been redeemed. But 
what we can actually do is we can take one of these QCIPs and we can plug it into any brokerage firm and we can actually get a yield on these treasury assets. And this is where I want to show you how stablecoin issuers make their money and actually give you a dollar amount for that. We can see here that Circle USDC had about 43.5 billion invested into treasuries. Now, Keep in mind, we know that some of those are expiring. They had a long list of different treasuries. Um, so not every specific treasury is going to be the exact same rate. That being said, they will be very similar because they're all short-term treasuries, right? Same issuer, um, so about the same interest rate. If we take that $43.5 billion times a 3.2% interest rate, we get about $139 million per year that they're earning simply from creating these stable coins. Um, and I actually put the calculation on screen because I do not trust myself to do math. So there is the calculation to confirm. But lots of companies make lots of money, right? The thing that's so interesting about stablecoin issuers is that it is very close to a riskless business model. Now, I'm not saying that it is riskless. I'm saying that compared to other enterprises, there is considerably less risk. And I'll explain why. You're not really putting any upfront capital. Essentially, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, you want a stable coin? I can make a stable coin for you. So we demand payment equal to the stable coin value. I'm not going to create a token and issue it till you pay me for it. So you give me a thousand dollars. I say, okay, I'm creating a thousand stable coins. Now at this point, I've issued a thousand stable coins. I have a thousand dollars. My only obligation is to redeem those coins for dollars at any time. I can do that without losing any money, right? Now, that so far is pretty low risk. But what I actually do from there, I say, you know what? I know these people, they're not all going to come redeem their coins at once, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that money that's highly li liquid. It is cash. I'm going to put that into treasury bills. Now, treasury bills backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, um, highly, when we think of financial assets and you're going through all your training, they say that treasuries are as close to riskless as you can get. They're one of the safest assets, right? So we don't have to worry about the government defaulting on these treasuries. We don't have to worry about the price going down because they're all very short term. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to earn yield on these treasuries. We're going to keep a little cash if people come in to redeem those stable coins, but we're just earning interest on these treasuries. Now, let's think from the issuer's perspective. What's the best case scenario? The best case is that I issue these coins to you and you go and you trade them with other people, but you never actually redeem them, right? You sell them for Bitcoin. You put them in a DeFi protocol. That $1,000 that you gave me, I'm just continually reinvesting in treasuries as my old treasuries expire. So um, I put $1,000 at a 3% interest rate. Now I've got an additional 30 bucks at the end of the year. So even if you do redeem, I've still made $30. But let's also think about the worst case scenario. My treasuries, they're not going to default. The worst case for me is that you come in and you say, hey, I had these stable coins for a while. I want my cash. Okay, all I do is I sell those treasuries, right? It's highly, highly, highly unlikely that I'm going to sell them at a loss. So I sell those treasuries. I've probably made a little bit of profit already. I give you back your $1,000. And from there, what do I do? I keep the rest as profit. So it's from a business perspective, we're not investing in a 20 million, billion, zillion, trillion dollar factory. We're not, you know, buying real estate. We're essentially not creating a product until we've already got that money and we're making money off a highly safe asset. So let's again, think about this from the perspective of the issuer. What are the goals of the issuer? Me, if I'm issuing a stable coin. The interest rate on treasuries, again, is going to be essentially the same, right? They're all treasury bills. They're all short-term debt securities backed by the U.S. government. I can't really increase my interest rate that much, but what I can do is get more volume. So I don't want to issue 
a thousand stable coins, right? Because then I get one treasury bill and like 30 bucks. I want to issue a million stable coins, a billion stable coins, because I can scale this very easily. Now, I maximize the issuance of coin by getting more people to trust in my cryptocurrency to want my stable coin over my competitors. The rate, again, remains the same, but the profit in dollar terms increases. Now, this is something that's very interesting because I want more people to use my stablecoin. It's a business that scales very easily. So how can I compete for customers? Well, I can prove myself to be the most trustworthy stablecoin. I can release my reports more often. I can comply with the government. I can try and say, hey, I'm the most stable stablecoin. You should trust me, right? Something that could also be a possibility, and I haven't really seen any cryptocurrencies doing this just yet. But if I'm earning that 3.32% interest rate, what if I pushed a little bit of that back to the holders of my cryptocurrency and I said, you know what, we are the only stablecoin that you earn interest on your stablecoin. Um, this actually wouldn't be too far-fetched. We kind of see this already with checkable money markets. These are uh, money market funds that will invest in treasuries, and essentially what you can do is you can write a check against your own money market fund. So think about this as a possibility for the future. I'm issuing 100 million stable coins, and every single dollar that I issue, I'm putting that into my treasuries, 3.2% interest rate, I'm getting $3.2 million per year. Now, flip this around. Let's suppose that if I offered customers a 1% kickback, I said, you know what? I'm earning 3.2% on these treasuries. What I'm going to do is just for holding this stable coin and choosing me over my competitors, I'm going to give you a 1% interest rate on your stable coin. If you have one stable coin or a hundred stable coins at the end of the year, you get an additional stable coin, right? Think how many more people would migrate to that stable coin, right? So now we've got 200 million stable coins issued. Even at the lower 2.2% interest rate, we're making $4.4 million. So I find that very interesting. Not saying that companies should do it or that they're going to do it. There's, you know, you get into that area. Well, now maybe it's a security, but from a theoretical perspective, I could see something like this trying to happen. I've not seen it yet. Now there is. A couple years ago, I don't know what happened to it. I don't know where it went, but there was something, the DAI stablecoin, that was kind of a wrapped version of that called Chai, which automatically earned interest for you, but you could redeem it for the underlying um, dollar DAI stablecoin at any time. Again, like I said, I don't know where it went. It was a decentralized versus a centralized stablecoin. So the only reason I'm mentioning that is just to say it's not something that's out of theoretical possibility, some company could try and do this. So as always, thanks for watching. Just did want to recap. Stable coins are important. Um, the issuers earn from issuing and they earn more the more that they issue. So moving forward, they're going to try and gain a market share. They could do this in a couple ways by being the most trustworthy, but also perhaps in the future by trying to give customers a little bit of a kickback for using their specific coin. But as always, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful, and I'll see you next time.